Okay, so it's it's okay. So we can uh, we can record right now. Everything is perfect. Good, fine. So let me start. And sorry for uh, being late for five minutes. So I would like to thank all the participants for coming to this uh, webinar. Uh, organized by ARCUS 2, Work Package 11, Plurilingual and Intercultural Hub. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, my colleagues uh, from Granada University. Uh, so uh, Professor Silvia Montero Martinez. Uh, so she is a professor of the Department of Translation and Interpreting at the University of Granada. Uh, her research interests are wide, first of all, in terminology, lexicography, cognitive processes in translation and interpreting, terminological knowledge bases, ontologies, lexical semantics, and frame semantics. And she is the author of nearly four research papers since 2000. 2000. Uh, well, another colleague, it's a great pleasure as well to introduce Esther Castillo Perez. And she is a trainee researcher with a pre-doctoral contract in the Department of Translation and Interpreting at the University of Granada and PhD student in the doctoral program in language, text, and context specialized in legal translation, translation technologies, and terminology. She is currently working on the doctoral thesis on terminology management and internationalization in the field of higher education within the international project Arcus European University Alliance 2. So uh, let me give floor to you and well, welcome everybody and the floor and the screen is yours, dear Sylvia and Esther. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Roma. Thank you for the, uh, for the introduction and uh, good afternoon to all the participants. Can you hear me all right, Roma? Yes? Perfect. Yes, okay. everything is okay. Yeah. Okay, so thank you all for being here also. Today, my colleague and I, uh, my colleague Esther and I, will talk about terminology in internationalized academic institutions, such as the University of Granada and organizations like the Arcus Alliance. Uh, this presentation aims at non expert and a non expert audience in terminology. And for this reason, we will present the following contents. We will begin with a brief introduction to the need for terminology management. Then we will have a look at the practice of institutional terminology management, and we'll see some of the tasks carried out in this process. Uh, we will also present some of the tools uh, that result from this management together with their main objectives. And finally, Esther will present the prototype of the Arcus term base, which is now available online. She will also explain some of the main functions as well as some of the main characteristics of the tool. So, oh, sorry. So therefore, as an introduction, I would like to mention that uh, quantitative studies in the corporate sector estimate that in 70% of cases, different terms can be used to refer to the same concept. Oh, sorry again, there. And another interesting observation, the same line is that 85% of employees may use a different term from the one used by their colleagues in other departments to refer again to the same concept. And the same situation can be found in the academic sector. For instance, if we take the case of the University of Granada, uh, this is an institution with more than 6,000 employees and more than 60,000 students from a wide range of countries. Here in this institution, we have seen that for a long time, we found several translations into English of the Spanish term rector or rectora de la Universidad de Granada. Some of these examples include vice chancellor, president, director, um, even provost of the University of Granada. And the same examples can be found of variety, uh, can be found when we look at the uh, translations, terms in English for 
por uh, ejemplo, grado en traducción e interpretación en la Universidad de Granada, that can be translated as degree in translation and interpreting, bachelor's degree, undergraduate program in translation and interpreting. Furthermore, we've come across numerous obsolete terms that continue to be used extensively at the University of Granada, both internally and in documents addressed to external bodies. This is the case, for instance, of the term Vice Rectorate for International Relations, which has been substituted years ago by the Vice Rectorate for Internationalization. However, we still find both terms are being used. In short, there is a vicious circle where a lack of consistency in the use of original or pan original language at the target languages very often creates communication problems, both for original documents and for the inconsistent translations. This loss of efficiency usually projects a bad image of the institution and their services. Now, these issues are all the more relevant in environments where multiple languages and cultures are involved, where complex content is managed, and where quality, accuracy, and consistency are essential. And all of these characteristics that I just mentioned are found in highly internationalized institutions and organizations. As an indicator of quality and excellence, internationalization in higher education has become increasingly important. And this process is defined as, the, in, as integrating an international, intercultural, or global dimension into higher education aims, functions, and delivery. Uh, internationalization therefore involves, among other things, the adaptation of curricula, the homogenization of administrative management systems, and the creation of joint and multiple, multiple degree programs. In all these processes that I mentioned, there is a need to agree on the meaning of concepts and also the terms used to denote them, that is, to name the concept. Again, this environment describes the situation in international alliances, for instance, ARCUS. As you know, the ARCUS European University Alliance aims to pool experience in international cooperation and achieve better coordination in policies and action plans. The Alliance is currently composed of the following universities, Granada, Graz, Maynus, Minho, Leipzig, Lyon, Padua, Vilnius, and Rauclau, and involves eight different languages, English, French, German, Italian, Lithuanian, Polish, Portuguese, and Spanish. In such a complex, multilingual, multicultural context, proactive terminology management is essential if we are to maintain a consistent tone and voice. Therefore, in international institutions and organizations, either in the corporate or in the public sector, it is necessary that we implement, design and implement an institutional terminology management protocol that we develop institutional, a variety of institutional language tools. And finally, that we promote proactivity, multidisciplinarity, and the integration of such processes and tools within the organization. So first of all, in regards to terminology management, here we refer to the systematic, and this is very important, systematic creation and compilation of terms and the corresponding concepts they denote or name used in the documents and services provided by the institution. In these settings, terminology management is performed for standardization and normalization purposes. And this is also a very important uh, point. In other words, the use of proprietary and frequent terms is regulated according to a variety of criteria. 
uh, interests of the institution at a specific time and situation. These criteria may include semantic transparency, linguistic economy, corporate image, language appropriateness, accuracy, etc. The end result of this uh, regulatory process is a uh, uh, is the is a list of terms classified in a number of categories. For example, of the Arcus Alliance, there is, there is the proprietary terminology specific to this organization, such as the original name in English, Arcus European University Alliance, together with the official multilingual equivalents. We also have a group of obsolete terms, uh, such as, for instance, Work Package 4.9, Online Terminological Database for Terms in Higher Education, which was a denomination used under Arcus, uh, one Arcus phase one. Moreover, a set of non-recommended terms is identified which includes denominations that are regarded as invalid based on the criteria, one or more of the criteria previously mentioned. For example, this is the case of the name Arcus Alliance, Arcus written in sustained capital letters, and another example, Arcus Project, in reference to the Arcus Alliance. However, uh, in environments where standardization, normalization acknowledges the importance of communicative, different communicative contexts, we should speak of a normative and harmonizing terminology management. Thus, at the Arcus Alliance, together with the terms considered official and preferred, we identify the variants that are accepted in certain communicative contexts. For example, and this is a very simple example, but I think we can see what I, it's easily, we can easily see what I mean. For example, for the English preferred Arcus European uh, Alliance, the abbreviated forms Arcus Alliance and Arcus are accepted and can be used in written, well, in, in, uh, in some communicative context. These categories of terms uh, should be explained updated and disseminated among the interested groups. Uh, the terminology resource developed for this purpose should be centralized one uh, to provide consistent data at all times to the different users and should also be user-friendly or, user or as user-friendly as possible to facilitate the work of uh, employees and other stakeholders, users in general. These tasks are crucial for those institutions and organizations that are very active internationally and that need to produce texts in several languages. This is often mandatory when the official language of the institution is not English, which uh, at least for now is the lingua franca in the academic world. Now, all of the tasks previously described a part of an institutional terminology management protocol and are usually carried out by terminologists uh, or led by terminologists uh, together with translators, uh, people in the communication offices, departments, et cetera. These professionals, I'm referring now to terminologists, are experts in the formulation, description, management, and distribution of multilingual terminology. Now, uh, in regards to uh, institutional language tools, uh, when we have to develop content, trans tra content translated or translated into different languages, be, be it uh, websites, academic agreements, research uh, news, teaching guides, or the visual content, etc., uh, this requires the use of institutional language resources. Therefore, when developing tools to improve uh, the language of any institution, organization, we need to consider that there are two basic pillars here, and that is the institution's specific terminology, proprietary terminology, and the institution or organization's style guides. For instance, at the University of Granada, as a response to the need to systematically manage university terminology, 
In 2018, we launched a terminology resource in the form of a database called UGA Term. Uh, UGA Term is a bilingual Spanish English database and it is conceived as a centralized and open access resource. Here we can see the uh, homepage where you can find access to all the contents and functionalities of the tool. Currently, UGA Term contains over 49,000 terms in over uh, 22,000 entries. Another task of the uh, group of terminologists responsible for uh, resources such as UGR term is to uh, disseminate the resource among the organizations that may find it useful for the translations. Uh, for instance, uh, this is the case in our case, in the case of the UGR, of UGR term of the European Parliament's Directorate General for Translation and the Spanish Department, which recommends the use of this tool among their employees. Now, based on the knowledge gained in the construction of UGR term, the Arcus Alliance is building an online terminology uh, uh, resource called Arcus Turnbase in all languages of the partner universities. The Turnbase prototype with more than uh, 12,000 terms has already been launched uh, thanks to the work carried out, as I said before, in work package 4.9 under our Arcus 1. In the Arcus 2 period, we'll be adding two more languages, that is Polish and Portuguese, and continue with the creation and updating of term, the terminology collections uh, already created. In a few minutes, Esther is going to present this tool in more detail, detail and hopefully we'll be able to access this server with no technical problems. We'll be having some technical problems these days and we hope it's, it is solved, at least for today. Now, the main objective of tools such as UGR Term and Arcus Termbase is to facilitate oral and written communication within the organizations, making it more efficient and coherent, both internally and externally. To this end, they regulate the use of the organization's proprietary terminology, including the name of posts, divisions, activities, degrees, whatever they uh, produce or work on. Um, to this end, they regulate, uh, sorry, they also regulate the use of common academic terms belonging to a wide uh, range of subfields, some specific, for instance, to the teaching and learning process, and others to more transversal fields, such as quality, evaluation, research, etc. For instance, in the case of UGR term, the thematic index presents three main sections. One, for the UGR's proprietary terminology, including the names of the UGR academic centers, structures, activities, museums, degree programs, etc., norms, regulations, etc. Uh, we also have a section dedicated to terminology related to research and higher education. And finally, two transversal notions, that is terms and concepts that we find very frequently in the translations carried out by the language services unit and other uh, offices at the University of Granada. If we take a look here at the term entry, Rector de la Universidad de Granada, at least we see that uh, each entry provides at least the official and preferred term in Spanish. And this is the case of the masculine form Rector de la Universidad de Granada, as well as the feminine form Rectora de la Universidad de Granada, together with the official preferred English correspondence. And here is Rector of the University of Granada. Furthermore, we also provide additional information regarding the gender, uh, geographical variant, use of terms, I mean, a note on the use of a term, etc. For example, at this entry, uh, we found there is a note regarding the use of the Spanish term in context. And we also include in this entry in Spanish two other terms that are admitted. They are not the preferred, but they are admitted. 
And this is the case of the masculine rector, magnifico, this is the difference, magnifico de la Universidad de Granada and rectora magnifica de la Universidad de Granada. And finally, as we see here, we include the terms that are not recommended within the UGR because we believe, the institution believes, they are not appropriate. Uh, for instance, this is the case, as I mentioned before, of the, uh, of the uh, terms director of the University of Granada, president, vice chancellor of the University of Granada, as a translation for rector de la Universidad de Granada. UGA term and, term and uh, Arcus term base have been primarily designed for internal users, that is members of the UGRs and the Arcus community respectively. Moreover, a secondary target are external users interested in the academic and institutional terminology used in the context of European higher education and the, the institutions, the specific institutions, the UER and the Arcus Alliance in this case. Sorry. As a companion to UER term, the Language Services Unit of the University of Granada has also produced the UGR English Style Guide for drafting institutional texts. This is also freely available from this uh, URL. Um, this handbook provides a set of standardized conventions that are recommended for use at the UGR. The guide has been primarily designed as a linguistic resource for internal and external translators, and the staff involved in the production of institutional texts in this university. The primary objective of this work is to contribute to the improvement of the quality and coherence of our institutional text written in English and uh, target to our international readership. To achieve these objectives, a user-friendly and highly visual manual has been produced. Uh, for example, we note here recommendations on the use of gender-neutral language with a very intuitive layout. Adequate examples appear in green and uh, less adequate or wrong examples appear in red. Now, with the same objectives in mind, but adapted to the context of the Argus Alliance, we have started to develop a new style guide. In this case, it will help to improve the quality and coherence of text written in English by the communication officers and teams uh, in Argus, as well as any other uh, member of the Argus community interested in producing high quality texts aimed at the Argus readers. In the short and medium term, the success of any language standardization policy depends to a large extent on three factors. That is proactivity, multidisciplinarity, and integration within the organization. Proactive terminology management aspires to intercept terminology at the time when it is first coined. In other words, when concepts are created and named at the organization. Multidisciplinary terminology management means that different stakeholders in the organization need to get involved in terminology discussions, decisions, and implementations. Stakeholders include people in governance, management, representative and administrative roles, as well as academic and research staff. Finally, a successful organization must not uh, leave or limit terminology management to an isolated activity within the translation and communication offices and departments. It's, instead, it must be incorporated as a holistic approach that permeates communication processes carried out at the management, administrative, and support structures of the organization. If these three factors converge, the benefits of institutional terminology management will be more evident in the organizations. For instance, at the University of Granada, 
an, uh, an institution which has three main campuses, one in the city of Granada, one in the city of Ceuta, and one in the city of Melilla. These two last campuses uh, placed in the north of Africa. We can find possible, uh, positive sorry, contributions of terminology management in the following areas. First of all, the improvement of the institutional language. Uh, now, writing and translating institutional texts in Spanish and English is easier and faster. And the consistent use of official terms and styles appropriate for our international community are ensured. Number two, the compliance with standardization requirements in official documents, something that is very important, is now ensured documents such as the European Diploma Supplement and in information resources like the new UGR's bilingual catalog of programs and courses called UGR CAD. Here we have the homepage of this new resource. It was launched a few months ago. It is the official bilingual ECTS catalog of the University of Granada. And it was, it was built thanks to the standardization of information related to courses and degree programs, both in English and Spanish. Also, UGRCAT complies with the Erasmus Charter on Higher Education, which mandates that all members instit member institutions publish the, their academic offer, at least in English and in the official language of the institution. Number three, in addition, as a result, for instance, of your term, we now have a repository of institutional knowledge. Such a repository is available for members of the UGR and other interested parties who need to acquire knowledge about the institution's structure and services. This is, for instance, the case of our translators and editors at the Language Services Unit of the University of Granada. Moreover, language standardization increases international research visibility since the use of standardized institutional denominations avoids confusion resulting from the incorrect identification of the research activity. And finally, by producing clearer and more coherent documents and by increasing the transparency of the institution, language standardization contributes to an enhanced image building strategy in the University of Granada. And to sum up, the challenge of language normalization in academic institutions, actually in any organization, public, public private, corporate, academic, whatever, it is twofold, to encourage participation of the different profiles of term users and to make them aware of the usefulness of the institutional tools in their daily work. The Arcus Alliance is now facing the same challenge. Arcus already has a prototype for terminology management, that is Arcus term base. And this prototype needs to grow and disseminate in order to become a reference tool within this community. And this is all my part. Thank you for your attention. And um, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Esther, to present this multilingual tool and explain its main features. So thank you. OK, Sylvia, thank you. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. And meanwhile, I want to say, first of all, good morning. Well, not good morning anymore. Good afternoon to everyone here. And I hope you can see my screen right now. Let me know, please. Yes. Okay. Okay. okay yes. Fine. And can you hear me all right? Yes. Great. Yes. Well, uh, I want to say as well, thank you, Sylvia, for having explained and introduced the main theoretical aspects of terminology management. Now, in this part of the presentation, I'm going to focus on the practical aspects of the Arcus 10 base. So I'm going to give you a glimpse uh, of the basic functionalities of this prototype, the Arcus 10 based prototype, 
which you can see right here on the screen. So first of all, this is the interface of the Arcus 10 base homepage. And as, as you can see right here, it is divided into different sections. We have right here the number of terms, which are right now 12,307 terms. In this section over here, we have the search box and we also have an advanced search engine. If we keep scrolling down, we have this section devoted to explaining what is Argus 10 base and the team who was behind uh, the development of this tool. Then we have the terminology collection index. And I will explain in just a second what we really mean by this terminology collection index. If we keep scrolling down, we have the latest terms added, as you can see right here. And last but not least, we have the reports, materials, and partners terminology resources. So if we go back again here at the top in the menu bar, we can see that there are several ways to access the tabs, and this is very important since we can use either the search box and the advanced search engine, but we can also use an alphabetical index and the terminology uh, index, which shows the collections. So if we have a look at the about Arcus 10 base, right here, you will find the information related to the uh, terminology collections, the team behind the development and implementation, as I just said, of this database, and also patients of use and a contact area, which is actually very important. And I'm going to show it to you. So in this area, users can send any suggestion, comment, or even question about the term base in general, the website, the terms, the entries, etc. Uh, it is a very interesting way to connect with the users, of course, and it is a way as well to improve and update the terminology. So if we go back right here, we're going to look at the terminology collection index. So right here, as you can see, we find a list of fields and subfields that allows the structuring, oh, sorry, okay, that allows the structuring of the terms and the entries. So right here, we have established so far four collections. First of all, we have the Arcus ad doc glossaries. So in this case, this collection will include uh, glossaries developed for specific purposes within the Arcus Alliance. In fact, right now we are working on an inclusion and accessibility glossary in English uh, that will include more or less uh, 205 terms. So we're working on that. And this is devoted to specific glossaries for specific purposes within the Alliance. Then, as Sylvia just mentioned before, we, we have the Arcus One proprietary, that is official, multilingual terminology. So in this case, we have all the official terms created and used during the first period of Argus in all the different languages of the Alliance. We have right here the Argus Partners Institutional Terminology. In this case, we have all the official terminology from the partners institutions with their translations into English. And last but not least, we have the Arcus Multilingual European Higher Education Terminology Collection, which is devoted to um, the terms related to the Arcus, uh, sorry, the European Higher Education Terminology. And as we can see right here, we have several fields as academic events and awards, academic regulations and educational agreements, education and training systems and programs, etc. So now that we've talked a little bit about this terminology collection index, that it is actually very important, I'm going to show you real quick the search box to let you know how you can run searches. So in this case, we have the simple search engine and we can run searches using these filters over here. So we have all the words, we have any of the words, starts with, ends with, and the exact term. If we click, on the advanced search engine, it is loading. 
as Sylvia said before, we've been having some trouble with the server, so it goes a little bit slow, but it's fine, it's working. So we have right here all these filters that allows us to carry out a more advanced search, a more complete search. So we have right here the collection index that I just mentioned a few minutes ago. We have right here the languages included, the term type as well, the usage status, and the part of speech. Those fields are shown within the entries, and we will see that in just a second. So now that we know a little bit about the interface of the actual database, and we know what we mean by collection index, we're going to search some sometimes within the database using all the different ways to access the terms. In this case, we're going to start having a look at the Arcusat glossaries, the joint program development English glossary. So in this case, we're going to find monolingual entries with agreed definitions within the alliance. Okay, so these entries that do contain um, definitions. So for instance, we're going to have a look at the Arcus Joint Program entry. Let's see if it loads. It's going perfect. So now we can see all the information that I mentioned before. We have the terminology collection, the subject field, and the responsible body in charge of this Arcus Joint Program. In this case, we're talking about the Quality Learning Board. We have as well the definition right here with its definition source, of course. If we keep scrolling down, we have the English terms. In this case, we have two. We have the full form, which is the official and standardized term. And then we have the abbreviated form, which is the admitted one. We're going to have a look as well at the academic mobility entry. And this one shows something very interesting. Of course, it shares the same information that I just mentioned, the terminology collection, the subject field, the associated body, which is the same, the quality learning board, and its definition. But in this case, we have right here a note. And in this case, uh, the different types of academic mobility are shown. So for instance, we have right here vertical mobility, agreement has changed, and free choice summer school, etc. We have right here as well, the English terms with all the information I just mentioned. In this case, we're just talking about the full form, which is the official term. So now we're gonna go back. And in this case, we're going to have a look at the partner's institutional terminology. And we're gonna focus on the University of Lyon. So in this case, in this collection, we're going to find bilingual entries because we're talking about the official terminology of the institution and then their translations into English. And in this case, we're going to filter using the filter English. And let's see, we have right here the results in just a second, I'm sure. Yes. So now we have here the results and we're gonna have a look at the Academic Enrichment Office, for example. So, in this case, as I said before, we're going to find a bilingual entry. And of course, it has the terminology collection field, the subject field, and this gives us a lot of information. But because right here, we can say that the Academic Enrichment Office is part of the central management and administrative structures within the University of Lyon. We have also the associated body, which is the Department of Innovation and Development. And then we have the English terms, and also we have them in French, of course, as I just said before. This entry is very interesting because we have added the field normative organization. The University of Lyon comprises several universities. So we decided that it, it was useful to add this field in order to know that this office, this specific office belongs to the University Jean Moulin Lyon 3. So now we're gonna have a look at a different one. For instance, maybe the Department of Career Services to see this information as well. So in this case, of course, it's going to be a bilingual entry as well with English and French terms. And in this case, 
happens the same thing with the normative organization. You can see right here, the university is different. And we also have in the French section two terms. We have the full form, which is the official one. And then we have the abbreviated form, which is the admitted. And now we're gonna run a search from the main page. So right here, I'm going to search for the term undergraduate dissertation. Okay, it is it's right here. As you can see, we have right here some results. And now in this case, we can see as well the terminology collection and the subject field. We're talking about a training instrument and activity in this case that belongs to the teaching, learning and research process. So we have right here all the terms in all the different languages of the Alliance, of course, during the first period. And we have a lot of information regarding each term. In this case, as you can see right here, we have two terms in the English uh, section. One is this abbreviated form, which will be undergraduate dissertation, that it is the official standardized. And in this case, we have the full form, which is in this case, the admitted form which is undergraduate degree final year dissertation. And here we have all the different terms in all the different languages. And now we're going to run another search, but in this case, we're going to use the filter exact term. And since we're talking about the Arcus Alliance, I'm going to, I'm going to search Arcus Alliance. Wait a second. And as you can see right here, we have the results. So as Sylvia just mentioned, we have right here all the different designations for the Arcus European University Alliance. This one would be the full form, which is the official. Then we will have the abbreviated, which is the admitted. And then we will have this one, which is an abbreviated form, but it is not recommended. We have, of course, all the different terms in the languages of the Alliance. And just to finish with this very short presentation on what this tool has to offer and how this tool works, I just wanted, I wanted to mention that this, of course, is a work in progress. So this is a prototype and it needs to be updated, to be managed, and of course, to be improved. So um, this is what we really want to wanted to say you can access of course this term is already because it, it has already been launched uh, you can search it on google or you can use this link right here as you can see and and that be it i really want to to thank you all for your attention if you have any question regarding the theoretical or practical aspects of this presentation please we make any question we will be more than happy to, to answer them, so thank you. I'm going to stop sharing so that I can see you again. And thank you. Thank you very much, Esther. Thank you, Sylvia, for this informative presentation. And now we are open to questions. So do we have any questions? If not, so perhaps I will use this opportunity to ask one question to start with, and then perhaps the ball will be running uh, well. So you showed the contact uh, well uh, point where we can write if we, for example, have questions in connection uh, well with terminology. So how much interest have you received so far since this uh, terminology basis in action? So, and who answers these questions if there are those 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 questions in terms of of, uh, of different specific terms in different languages? Thank you. Okay, Roma, thank you for these questions. Well, as uh, Esther just mentioned, this is a prototype. Uh, we still have to, I have to ask Marina to include the access to the database into the web page because it is not there yet. And uh, if we have 
if we get any questions, I guess it will be the people here in Granada that will answer them. But this is, uh, this is a functionality that needs to be there. And it's something that should be discussed uh, in the future. I mean, who is going to take care and charge of this uh, work? If, you know, if the database grows and, uh, and uh, if the Alliance wants to use it as a tool, uh, a team will have to take care of the uh, maintenance, updating, and all this, uh, all this feedback with the users. Yeah. I think there are. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Are there any more questions? Adolfo, perhaps, was the first to raise the hand, if I am right. Uh, hi. Well, I'm not sure if I was the first one. But anyway, I go ahead. <laughs> Well, hi to everyone from Granada, and thank you very much, Esther and Silvia, for such a clear and useful presentation. I actually have a question, well, a couple of questions, more from the linguistic point of view. So you just mentioned that we uh, shouldn't be using Arcus in a sustained capitalization mode, and I was wondering why. Uh, so, because I've seen that, I've seen ARCUS as, you know, as an acronym with, you know, sustained capitalization, and also why we shouldn't um, use the term ARCUS project, because I, I had in my mind that ARCUS is an alliance, but it's also a project of all the universities involved. And then the second question is, is related to the variety of English that you are using uh, uh, in the term base, um, I, I, are you using a European English or American English, or are you giving some optionality here? Just those two questions. And thank you very much again. Okay, thank you, Adolfo, for these questions. Uh, in regards to the first one, uh, Arcus written in sustained capital letters. Uh, you just mentioned it looks like an acronym. An ARCUS and the word acronym, I'm sorry, the word ARCUS is not an acronym. Uh, the word ARCUS comes from or the name they chose for the alliance. It comes from the from Latin and it means bridge, bridging something, bringing, bringing something together. So it is not an acronym. And, and it that's why it shouldn't be written in sustained capital letters because it will lead to confusion, you know, like NATO or UN. Well, the, it, this is a multi-word. I mean, there, are, there is a multi. An acronym means there are different words underlined, and it is a multi-word denomination. And it's not. It is a monolexical word, lexeme. So it shouldn't be written in sustained capital letters. And the other one was um, I could, was the the, the non, Yeah, as I mentioned, it is not recommended to write or to use the name Arcus Project. Now, this is because of the semantics of the word project, which implies a beginning and an end, and, and that's it. And uh, I believe behind the concept of an alliance is not a beginning and an end, but it is an entity that aspires to, to last in time to 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 you know to to change and produce changes in in the in the member member institutions organizations wherever it is so that's the reason why project is not correct in this in the in the, in the meaning so it, it is not it doesn't have to do with the with 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 uh, syntax syntax or anything like that it is the meaning behind the word project and the other the other question, yes, that I didn't mention in my in my in my position, I didn't mention that uh, uh, we're using uh, European English for the uh, the, the equivalences into English. Uh, as you know, the European English follows the British spelling, but there is a main difference, and it is the cultural the cultural background that we use as a reference. Um, in the Alliance, there are many countries. They First, they don't have English as the official language. As second, secondly, they don't share the UK's culture. So uh, we don't want to take one country as a reference for all our translations. For instance, 
this is the case when I was saying previously that the University of Granada does not recommend the use of vice chancellor referring to rector, rector or um, director or president. Well, president is usually associated to the to the US culture, US background, whereas vice chancellor UK. But we're not, we don't have that. I mean, we don't have those characteristics. We're different. So uh, we don't want to be associated in, neither with the uh, UK context or the US, the US context. Well, something, this is some, something similar in the case of the, of the Argus Alliance. So I don't know if that's clear. Yeah, sure. Yeah, very clear. <laughs> thank you. Thank very you. Much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Really, I like this uh, explanation of Arcos Alliance and Arcos uh, project. So this is something that has to change uh, to be changed in our mindset. Yes. So when we uh, perceive Arcos as an alliance, so then we stop using this Arcos project <laughs> term. Okay. So thank you very much. And now I see Carmen. Uh, so uh, raised a hand. Yes. Go ahead. Hi. Thank you. Well. First of all, Esther and Silvia, thank you very much. It was really interesting. And I wanted to ask if it's possible to submit comments on the entries themselves in the term base. Okay, I will take that question because I was talking about the term base. So not yet. We are planning to add that in the future because I think it is very interesting to receive feedback from the users at, a, at that level, at that specific level. So we're planning to do that, in fact, in the UGR terms resource, users can do that. And I think it is very important to allow the user to express and to, to say what they think maybe, or maybe if they have any suggestion. And I think it is clearer and, uh, and easier to use it that way if it is included within the entry, but it's not yet uh, ready. So, but we're planning on implementing that. So thank you for the question. Thank you. So now perhaps Teresa, you may have uh, Yes, uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much, uh, Esther and Silvia, for your wonderful interventions, which have been really, really uh, interesting. I, and now I'd like uh, to ask you a question. So can I filter the, the results after running a, a simple search? Or do I have to do another search uh, to run another search in order to do that? Okay, well, Sylvia, I will take this question as well. <laughs> so yes, you can filter them. Maybe I can show the screen in just a second. So it is very simple. Once you have run a search right here, for example, you can write that Arcus. I hope you can see the screen. This is the simple search engine, okay? So once it loads and I hope it works now. It has been working the whole presentation. So now in this case, you can use all these filters. You can filter right here. You can filter by language, by term type, by usage status. Yes, for instance, if we have a look at this, we will have the results of Arcus when we're talking about uh, a full form. So yeah, see, okay. Yeah, thank you. I answered your question. Question. Yeah, thank you. Okay, do we have any more questions? If not, so I don't see any more raised hands. Marco, yes, go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I have Thanks everyone for the great presentation today. Uh, it's a very interesting topic, actually. Um, I got a question, actually a few questions about the uh, subject field. Uh, from what I can see from your presentation, there are at least some main fields and then there are kind of subfields related with them. So it sounds to me like there's a kind of tree, tree of subject fields or call them with the proper name. Um, so I think there's a kind of uh, ontology behind that. I was wondering if, is it possible to view, either navigate this ontology in the website and um, who decide which terms are inside this subject field and how they are related? 
And very last question, if there is a publication, if you thought about having a publication uh, about that. Do you want an answer there or you want me to answer the questions? I don't mind. Okay, go ahead. Mind. So go ahead. The, the first question, uh, yes. I mean, there is the structure is there and it is behind, but you cannot see it just yet. So you can see the main fields, but the structure is behind. And it is because it was based on the UGR term resource, which has similar fields, but we adapted them to, to be more precise regarding the Arcus Alliance. But yes, there is a structure behind it. It's, as, you said, as you said, it's kind of like a tree. It's a hierarchical uh, a structure, of course, with fields and subfields, but it is not shown. And regarding the second question, I didn't hear you very well. Could you repeat it, please? I'm sorry. Uh, the question was, uh, who, who decide the terms that are inside this uh, bunch of subject field, but maybe you already may really address this point with your previous uh, answer. Uh, so, and so who decide this? And the, the very last one was about having the publication behind that. Okay, so, well, so far we've been working, preparing Excel files and working with the rest of the partners. And in that case, we have been uh, compiling all the terms from the documents that were uh, created within the Arcus Alliance and also the terms that the partners gave us, because we're talking about their official terms. Of course, they were the ones who decided which terms were going to be published or no. And in the case of the multilingual higher education, we work with the um, with thesaurus about, high, about higher education, and we selected those terms, we shared those terms with the rest of the partners institutions so they could see it and they could decide if they were good or no. And then apart, like from that point on, we start working with those, with this, first packages of terms that we decided that were what well, mutually we decided that were good and they needed to be included within the database so i don't know if i answered your question correctly maybe Sylvia want to add something well yes yeah, thank you esther it was perfect yeah i just want to ask i i just want to add um, i think marco was um, was saying that if you are able to navigate through the ontology i mean that's, is, is, that's one of the questions you made, right? Are you able to navigate? Yes, you are able to navigate. Yes, uh, yeah, you can, you can actually, you can access the terms from the, this ontology, this semantic index. You see, this is the name we, we gave it, right? Oops. Yeah, I'm sharing the screen, so. Yeah. Uh, right here. And maybe if we have a look. Yes, like you can. I'm going to access the whole thing and then you can navigate. Yeah, go to the go to the Alcus multilingual European higher oh. education terminology, for instance. Okay. And yes, you can you can navigate. Oops. Yeah, right here. I don't know. Uh, you can navigate that that uh, that ontology, but uh, there you can see the uh, you can see all the uh, the higher the, the hierarchical order there. But still, as we said, this is a prototype. We only have 12,000 terms and the ontology is not completely uh, uh, developed. Um, as we introduce more concepts, more terms, we will have to add new categories to those uh, parent concepts or parent, uh, parent um, whatever you want to call them, right? Yes, and uh, I don't know, um, there was another question. I can remember, I wanted to add something, but I can't remember at this point which one it was. It was about having a scientific publication in order I, to you know, put a seal under well, this work. Yeah, uh, well, uh, Esther is already working on, on that, but uh, um, we still don't have any publications there, yeah. And I don't okay. know. I don't know if there is any other thing that I could add to your questions. No, I clarify. If I if I can add the very last comment with something is a support request more than a question. Uh, within Arcus, uh, we're package twelve. 
and WordPack 6, I think we'll move towards having a shared course catalog within the Alliance. And based on this kind of research you generated, I think we're gonna ask for your support in order to describe all the attributes that uh, uh, a curse, I mean, a teaching curse could have in order to have an homogeneous description of this kind of phenomenon that is the teaching course. And we'll really need your support on this side. Well, I think here you're referring to UGR CAT, not to UGR term or the Arcus term base. It doesn't really have to do one with the other. I mentioned here that at the UGR, we developed the UGR CAT based on the, well, based on the standardization of denominations, but actually UGR CAT has an ontology developed specifically for us for, for, for a course catalog. And uh, that's something that the, well, Arcus, I know Arcus is working on a shared catalog, but still I have no news on that. Um, so I don't know, I will wait for those. Uh, I know they want to, to, to replicate, say, or use the, the, the ontology on the, the, uh, the data model that I created for UGR CAT for the shared course catalog, but I still don't have uh, news on that. Very, very last question for you, Silvia. Can you please paste the link of this uh, UGR CAT in the chat box so I can get there? Thanks. Uh, yes, I can. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, well, I hope that we don't have any more questions. So on this note, I hope we can uh, finalize our, our webinar. And uh, well, I hope that you have uh, familiarized yourself with the first, uh, well, phase of uh, terminology, Arcus terminology uh, based development in Arcus 1. And please, uh, well, uh, be tuned to our events, uh, well, in the second phase of Arcus uh, uh, 2 uh, and in work package 11, plurilingual and intercultural hub. And we will inform you more about what's going on with terminology, how the work is, uh, is continuing. So thank you very much for being here, for coming. So, uh, well, one uh, one more issue in connection with certificates. So certificates, ARCO certificates will be issued to all of you, uh, those who participated at the webinar, and we will send you by email. So thank you very much, Sylvia. Thank you very much, Esther, for being here. So for delivering this presentation, I hope this is not the last time that we are here, and I hope that there will be more of these uh, of these events taking place. So we can express our gratitude by giving a warm round of applause here. So thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. So good luck in your careers and be interested in Arcos terminology base and in all the other uh, Arcus events, not only in web, uh, work package 11, but in other areas as well. So goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you Bye. so much for being here.